the exportations of goods and all to the foreign nations is exchanged for their foreign currency. But the most universally acceptable is the dollars. So they take the dollars. And because when you bring it into here, you don't spend the dollars. You spend Naira, the Naira equivalent of it. That's why there's an exchange rate. If you earn a foreign currency, there's an exchange rate of the value in Naira. When you exchange it to the bank, where does the money go to? The banks send it to the central bank. It's added into your reserves. Yes, I understand that. Now, here's another point. Any goods you bring into Nigeria, any goods you bring into Nigeria, you need to pay for it in equivalence to the dollars because the dollars is the universally accepted currency. Now, are you the one that pays for it or is the money taken out of the reserve? You, you need to answer because if you want to get access to dollars, you need to go to the banks or their bookies and all to exchange. Yes. Now, where do they get that money? It's from your re central bank. It's from your reserve. So indirectly, the government pays for it. For any goods you bring into Nigeria, the government indirectly pays for it. How? How does it pay for it? Why you? Because the the Naira has no value except within Nigeria. Hmm. Take that. The value uh, Naira is of no value except within Nigeria. The currency, the currency that is of importance is the dollars. That tells you your spending power in terms of global trade. So why is it that, the, that Naira is of no value? Is it because uh, Nigeria is uh, more dependent on consumption? Yeah, we, don't, uh, add to we, we have not. Value to, um, we have nothing of, of significance to sell to the uh, to the rest of the world except from raw materials. What finished product? What technological products do we have to sell to the world? We can offer services in terms of well-trained personnel as doctors, nurses, engineers and all that go abroad, um, offer their skills and bring back returns in extra trade earning. But apart from that, what goods do we sell except from crude oil? You are making a very interesting uh, point. Are you interesting? Are you interesting? Are you interesting? you Are you from Nigeria here, Are Are you not Are to China to buy goods, Are why, how would they buy it? Would they buy it from the Ghana cities or the Tanzania cities? They will convert it to the equivalent of the dollars. Yes. Now, why will change it to dollars now? This money will change to dollars from Ghana and Tanzania. This money owes by Nigeria man. Abi, we will not change it to that uh, dollars now. We will not buy goods there on a yen for China there. We will not bring the goods to Nigeria here. Are you telling me now? Now, how does this money consign na your Naira here? It has no business in Naira. Because we're not buying the goods in Naira, you're buying it in a foreign currency. Now, if you had earned that money, if you had converted it to the equivalent of Naira, yeah, you get. Because there's an exchange rate for Ghana cities to Naira and all that. And if you had converted it to Naira and you have taken it to the banks and all, the money will be taken out of the Nigerian reserve, not the Ghana cities reserve. Look, this uh, Ghana cities will be taken out of their own reserve, not the Nigerian reserve. You understand? The currency determines the identity of a nation, who they will hold responsible for, for who to pay us in equivalence to dollars, because dollars is the universally accepted a, a, a money range. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that, as at the time Bari entered, the, you need to understand something. The, uh, reserve was around 50 billion US dollars. Now, you had almost close to zero revenue with two things involved. 
One, you had the Niger Delta Avengers, if you refresh your memories well, that blew up more than 40% of the pipeline, decreasing our, um, our crude oil vo um, volume that we could ex um, export. And also, you had a crashing in the price of crude oil. One, you could not export crude oil at your maximum capacity, and now the price of it has fallen so dramatically low that you earn nothing but rubles from it. Is that justification for the failure of uh, government, successive governments? Why wouldn't they plot uh, modularly the finance to serve the local now, the, the, uh, the point, point of question is that which foreign country will be willing to give you their technological advantage? We have some Nigerians who are floating modular refineries and they are working. But unfortunately, what the military could do is to go and bomb all those refineries. You're talking about Other the illegal refineries that did not follow the due process. What, what made them did illegal? They get, did they, get they, they are not being recognized by the government because no, no, of their no, 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 no. personal reasons. No, you have a foreign entity in your sovereign state, refinery could oil, and the government doesn't know about it. These are indigenous people. Indigenous Nigerians who floated. Do you recall when uh, no, the former it. vice vice president you went to the Niger Delta to license them, okay. and he promised them you to, did, of course, no recognize them legally? You did, they do look one one thing you need to notice accountability. One, you are operating an illegal refinery where the source of your crude oil could not be accounted for. You either stole the crude oil and you were refining it illegally. And you call it a modular refinery. Let's call it spade a spade. You did not get the appropriate documentation and license. Then what stopped the government from regulating it? Because we also learned, even by the government, that 80% uh, of the crude oil have been stolen by undisclosed persons. Why are they being stolen? Stolen because people feel it's their right. But the people who are manning the waterways, the navies, and all that, would that be possible without their conspiracy? Let me ask you something. What's the population of Nigeria? I don't know because I'm not uh, in the uh, in, uh, in so population what's department. The population of the, the let me give you a broad spectrum of the security appetite. You have a population of 250 million people, right? As projected. But as projected. Not, uh, yes, as projected. The last census done was 150 or 149 million. Now, let's just say a projection of 250 million people. What's the total uh, number of police force we have? I think about 400. 000. And that's the highest number of civil servants we have. That's the highest in the sector. That's the highest number. Followed by the military. And the military force in Nigeria is within 200,000. 150 within that range. Now, if you add those two combined, what does that give you? A total of about 600, approximately 600, to man a population of 250 million people. But is the government not aware of the deficits? So what are they doing? They could not because they don't have the resources to do it. You mean they don't have resources? Um, Being the la sixth largest economy uh, oil producing the country. All those sentimental stuff. Those are what no. What is sentimental about that? Are you not an oil producing state? Leave the sixth largest oil producing countries of the world. No, those are stuff for petrol. The people that want to elevate their egos and stuff. I deal with facts. I look and at facts people. are not the, the, not the realities. The reality of the fifth largest economy in the yes. world and all that. Let me give you a perspective of things. Is Nigeria rich? Nigeria is extremely wealthy. How? Endowed with both human capital and natural resources. But unfortunately, so, they are not stopped. It. It's just like you giving me a scenario of a first class student that went to school and is not able to secure a job. Doesn't he have a potential to be rich and wealthy? Of course, the society hampers such. He would have strived outside the environment to farm themselves like Nigeria. 
Is he rich? But he has potential that would be yeah, of course. Potential, it's just a figure. Okay. So I'll give you another perspective. In 1999, what was the Nigerians' budget? What was Nigerians' budget? Total federal government's budget. A trillion era. A trillion era. What was the exchange rate? Around the, what is one something? No, it was around uh, 70. 72. 72. 70. Now, if you convert that to the equivalent of the dollars, that will amount to how much? Okay. That will be roughly around 40 billion US dollars. Now, I'll now give you a comparative analysis in the sub Saharan uh, in the African region. At that time, let's say we had a population of 100 to 120 million people. Yes. Let's see. Let's just assume. Now, our closest neighbor, South Africa, had a rough population of about 20 million people. Guess what their budget was? Their budget was around 300 billion US dollars. Just because they are more or less uh, industrialized states. Huh? Government is not doing it to the population. We are talking about South Africa. I've been in South Africa. They know that they pay those who are not working there. That's a social welfare system of South Africa. But in Nigeria here, where you say you have 250 million population, nothing not is given to anybody, even on state or local government. In poverty population. I'll, I'll come back to that. Population I'll, living below poverty I'll line. Come to that, but let me give you another perspective. You have a less population of about 20 million people, and you have a population of about 100 million people. Are they the same? Are they the same? Yes. They're not the same, but the same. Uh, it's, now, it's, it's in terms population, of it's increasing population. Two states. Are they the same? Because of governance. Yes. Because of governance. Yes. Which I know as one of the I'm asking you, okay. what's the total capacity of their police force? In Nigeria, where I am here, in Nigeria, where I am here, Nigeria will tell you that we have 250 million population. Abi? But in the state in Nigeria, as any local government, they are not giving anything to any human being. I'm not trying to bring human flaws we have. I'm just trying to deal with what is attainable in figures. When you have a large population, the cost of governance increases. Because you have to put people in positions in power or to, to delegate to do certain tasks to advance your cause. That means you have to employ people in the police for civil order. And you have given us an instance where the ratio to police yeah. and the masses is something not... Is something not, not you cannot, right uh, yes. You have to put people there. Now, the cost of you rising a, a huge military force police force and a military force is extra or astronomically high. By, by your own assumption? Not assumption. Now look at the state like why is Saudi Arabia flourishing? Let's say they earn close to about 400 billion US dollars from crude oil. They have a population of less than 5 million excluding terrorists, citizens, that they are responsible for catering. Now, if you take the how um, many, how um, uh, what is the required amount of people to police them, to maintain law and order, to maintain that there is peace and everything goes on smoothly, what is the cost of that? Because everything costs money. You need to know that everything costs money. Of course.
when it is well it is far less you know what, it is far less well utilized but not, that is not the case of nigeria there is gross mismanagement of public there, will, look, there has always been corruption in every tier of human existence yes but not to this extent the corruption in deaths within nigeria is more than 200 plus well, i'm not disputing that i'm not disputing that but that's not the major reason why we are where we are it's part of the major reason because the system allows corruption to thrive. The reason is because we are the feeder. We are the bottom of the food chain. We are just the raw material suppliers to the advanced nations. They give us crumbs and they advance their cause. Enrich themselves, and they will want you to remain in that leader because uh, you are benefiting them. Now, let me ask you something. There was um, information I got not quite um, a long time ago. Why is the Ajakusta steel industry not working? I think that uh, President Tinubu should be able to address such question. Was it the one that commissioned the construction? It is same material. He assumes the office of the president. So, and uh, such questions should be directed to him. I hope he's listening. Okay. During who was it commissioned? And what was the plan for it? Where was it stated for it to work? What were the issues that happened along? And why is it still not working? And what is the importance of a steel mine to an industrialized nation? Of course, to kind of emphasize that. Look, Nigeria has so many issues. Are you, are you submitting that Tinubu will not even uh, prefer solution to this mirrors of problems? There is no Messiah in solving this problem. It's not just one person that will solve the problem. It's a collection of people with similar ideas, knowing the problem itself and being dedicated towards solving it. And who are the people if you, you can't get it from the present Nigerian? Why do you always put one person? The problem about we Nigerians, we pay importance to heroism of one individual being the only solution to our problem. What happened to the political? Uh, what happened to the elites? What investments have they done in Nigeria? Of course, you can witness that. Absolutely. The only person that I see is Danguti. All the other ones are just frustrating their wealth and investing outside Nigeria. Even Dangote fought over some, of course, he's monopolizing the economy for the world. Then where are the other elites? Why are they competing in, with him? Why are they monopolizing other industry? Why is it the only one? I think that's the question that uh, we need to unravel because I don't know why Ibeto, the likes of Ibeto, Igu's men, and the past men should fold up or giving room for Dangote uh, to monopolize. Were they, own, were they owned by Nigerians? Most of the indigenous, yes, like Ibeto was owned by Nigerians, but unfortunately the government policy and other uh, political issues have to frustrate him to give way for, before you go for See, I'm an importer. I'm into electronics and clothing. See, when you talk about Nigeria, just I was telling someone, I have two wives, two women, and I have nine children. And my first daughter has graduated from Covenant University. And the other four are university too. I just have now. Okay. And I, want my, I have another three again. Somebody asked me, say, oh, God, Chris, why are you marrying wife? And I said, because I will not be my business centers every time. Secondly, too, these ladies are educated. They can handle anything about my business, my shops, my companies, everywhere I have. But me, I will not be there. But I had the brain to create business anywhere, to travel to different nations of the world. I just have it now. Okay. Now, somebody asked me a question. How are you managing wives and children? I said, with my own best knowledge, do I handle it? I don't have a problem with them. In fact, my happiness every day by day. I just have it now. Now, if I give birth to a child, there's a few supposed to come for that child for 30 years, man or woman. This child must go through formal education or informal education. That's what I mean. When you go through the formal education and informal education, maybe you go to school after your graduation, you learn work. I mean, now you have, let me say, you have about two, three billion in your bank account. 
and they didn't get married. Now, more money maybe the husband have money much. So I mean, what the lady learn or what the lady know? That's the money to start up whatever he wants to hear. That lady will not disturb the father. Are you understand what I what I lay down now? And that's okay because of this now, women are not disturbing me. Say you do to my own children, you know, do to my own children. Other ones say you don't do to my own children. So and I told them, say I have somebody in this line that has only one and four children, but they are fighting every day by day. You know why? It's, the guy is rich. The guy will send money to his own to his own brothers and sister. The wife will rise up. Are you following me right now? The wife will say, why you, why will you send your send one million to your brother? Why? How much are we making number? How much are we making? The Kedja. Now, you know, this is my dear brother. That's one pigeon in English that said that I should do your home, you I should set your home, you lie on it. Nigeria system is that our leaders we have here, they keep on, let me say, saffron the, the nation's money. Do you call yeah. them leaders or yeah. opportunists? Because Canada. leaders should charge the way forward in, for the people. I was in, I was in Canada. Well, I'll ask you one question. And I take this from a perspective of the survey I've done globally around asking Nigerians, both elderly and the youth, about if you're put in a position of power, like you're fortunate to be the president, what would you do? The average response I get is that I go chop, but I go do well. You understand the meaning of that? So... The leaders are a reflection of the general sentiment of, of every Nigerian. Not every, you might, you might use the word majority, but not every. Yes, uh, and majority. I was in a place. What do they say about majority? Have the way, minority have the say. Not all the time, because the majority might be on the part of error. So we, the minority who understands how the government no, no, should be wrong, the point is that can when you have a majority, order. doesn't mean you're right. It just means that whatever you do, that your actions carries weight. You understand? So I'm saying this on the matter of. The leaders we have is a reflection of the society we live in. So are you saying there is no hope for the Nigerian populace if that is your submission? What the minority that have a good understanding on this situation is to do an active campaign to try to convert that majority to their side so they can have an actionable plan. Uh, how long could that take? As Nigerians, it can we take. No longer have it take, can take. A, level of, uh, it can government. take as eternity wants it. Uh, on this note, we call it a day. Well, if that will take eternity, by it's your just, submission, Nigeria no, is gone. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not condemning Nigeria. I'm not condemning Nigeria. I'm just saying that. It takes a whole lot of work. The system of the country. It takes a whole lot of planning, logical reasoning, and making contingent plans. Because Nigerians have always been this one way direction. They don't have what could possibly happen if these actions go south. It's just a one-way monoplan. If everybody say one thing, they follow that path. They don't look for other alternative or possible means if the situation goes not as planned. But are you saying that, uh, 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 of course, the tribal sentiment doesn't play its part in this? Uh, uh, well, I see only I see only two tribes in Nigeria: the rich and the poor. And the poor uh, and the rich uses that divides of tribes to stay in power. Well, 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 well. The system is that, my brother, Nigeria level here. The only thing we need in Nigeria, I want a leader. Do you know why? I've been a, I've been a place in Canada. I spent only one week. I'm a dealer, supply some just uh, some dealer there. When I get there, I saw one of Nigeria's top governors. I don't want to mention their name, his name. He was in a garden owned by the federal government of that, that country. To enter the garden is $5. 
And I see our leader there. The garden will be rotating. We rotate it small, small like this. Then I now see one of our governors there. The, the man sat down with two ladies. I asked now. They were romancing him. Inside, I said, This man is a governor of a state. Why don't you think of building this kind of thing? Even in your state, even Nigeria here. I asked me now. So if you watch the system, their system is that it's to bring the country down, enrich their own personal posts, go to another nation to build houses. There's a place I went to in Dubai. A Dubai man told me that the majority of houses are owned by Nigerian political leaders. 104 story building, 120 story building. Now, I'm not finding out that my dear brother is that the only way for Nigeria to be okay, to be settled, if one, if we can have a good leader, leader, and people that work with him can easily change. If is a subject of conflict. If, if, if it's if, conditional, it's conditional. It's conditional. Or oh, second one again, splits. Why do you always subscribe to that uh, no, 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 no. division? Because it's a split. From all submissions, well, let you split for you. You have met. I, I understand your, your, uh, your sentiment. I understand your sentiment. I serve a boss. And I spent five years with the man. In Igbo culture, in Igbo way of business. When you serve a boss, four, five years, seven, ten years, he will open your own business for you. Now, and I serve this boss. This boss wants to settle one of our boys after I'm freed. And I told that guy that, see, I don't have money to settle you. Both of us will be managing this particular shop. Whatever come out, we divide it. I guess I mean now. Now they continue managing it. One, two, three, four years. Before you know it, argument now started. Some of the sales rep started stealing money. Some support, some is with the, the main boss, some with the, with the other servant who has been free with boss. So they now invited me. The boss and our senior man were fighting. I have my own shop that time. And I said that the only way to solve this matter, everybody should go. Yes, now. now, when all this happened in those states, when all of them, two of them, uh, the other guys say no, Chris, what will you say? Everybody should go. Our boss, our boss answered that me and you we are fighting every day based on this particular medical business. Why can't everybody go? Whatever you see, you manage it like that. Mm -hmm. And I told them that let everybody go. Then everybody want to implement whatever you learn, whatever you know, in your own wisdom. You add value to whatever you have in your own level. Now, at that time, whatever other business, have, let me say 280,000 naira, they divide it into two. This one go, and this one go. I guess I mean now. What happened is that the other guy, the boss said, I don't have money to rent shop for now. And I told the guy that I use Miss Bushy Boss, not Miss Bushy Boss. I draw drug in a body. I want to carry the Miss Bushy Boss, go to some of the local market in Yoruba land here. They sell it. I said, You too, come to that level. I guess I mean now. Now, this guy now said, Okay, how will I use 280,000 naira? I mean, 140,000 to start this business. And as I will take it to somebody that will give him his bushing boss. Well, if you rent the shop, anything can go down in the shop. The owner of the shop will have his shop. What I want to bring out, finally, the guy stand up with that one of 40,000 naira. I guess I mean now. Today, as I'm talking to you right now, in a mushi, it's one of the big, big medical dealers in mushi there. You know where they're selling medical, yeah. Now, he deal with his um, uh, medical instruments, hospital instruments. That guy, Uche, his name. Now, what I want to bring out Mushi, when you get to that mushi bus up, you know that, but not Bushalosha. Losha. Not Losha. Not Losha. Why you try down? Okay, is it the one to loot Congo? I don't know the name of the area. I know the way they sell medical. Where they sell yes. medical this thing? The shop is inside like this, just as of Uche. What's happening now? Now, what I want to bring out now today, our boss, the man is old man. What's happening now? The son has taken over the business. There's a competition between the man, that's the son, and that Uche. Two of them are doing well. I just have now. So in, in the Nigeria level now, me and you in Nigeria level, the houses are afraid of because I've I've, uh, I've listened to some of the top politicians in Northern Ireland. They believe the crude oil they see. I have now. The majority have oil block in that place. And I ask them, say, oh, these big Igbo boys are full all over Nigeria and worldwide. Do they operate in the oil? Do they operate in the oil block? No. The guy said no. 
I say, okay, in this camera where now you're living here, a cow, the most highest building there in Kao, in Cardona, owned by some Igbo guy who don't have anything. They, don't, they can't even write their name fully. I say, now, they're into trading. And I said that, be, I mean, put our mind in crude oil, crude oil, crude oil every time. It's affecting us. And that's why it's some politicians in the northern parts of south, of southwest here, or let's say southeast again. We talk about everyone should go, they say no. I say, now, because of that particular crude oil. Now, I throw one question to somebody in River States. I say you are from River. I say yes. You people in River, you are going to creek to get money every day. You are passing creek. Are you richer than Enugu boys, Enugu state boys, who is into business in Lagos states? I say no. Are you richer than Ebony state boys, who is into business in Lagos states? I say no. Now, why are you dying because of crude oil? Something that is on ground. The higher resources God give everybody is, is this thing. The brain. The brain. You use it. They are. So you use it. Like me. I use my own. I fry a car, I fry bones before I know how much I make. Yes, I mean now. I carry planted from different states, go to other states. There's one guy coming here, Kevin. He carry planted to Japan. Say, I don't guy, yes, I mean now. You make much money. What I want to bring up my dad and all these things that the only situation, only thing that will solve this problem in Nigeria. Is everyone should go. The political leader will have all their totality talks is on that crude oil, timber. Okay. That I, all that is a talk. I, I have an uncle there. I understand your perspective and your sentiments coming from the southeast. Uh, based on the whole idea of splitting came from the OBR for war, I guess. And there were a whole lot of um, unresolved resentment. We understand injustice and marginalization, not just about the sentiments. Yeah, yes. Our sentiments. Yeah, ways, are... What led to the civil war is because of the gross injustice, of okay. course, being meted okay, on the that. people of the eastern that, uh, region. Injustice. As I'm talking to you right now, I have a passport of Ghana. Look, there are casualties of war. You can term it injustice or whatever name you want to call it. Every war has its casualties. Before the war ensued, that is what led uh, to the look, war. You might talk as Southerners, uh, who is at fault in this war? But the war happened. People died. Of course. And that left a grave amount of sentiment. Why? Because the issues are not yet being addressed. Those the pertinent issues, issues are not yet being addressed. Then. What were the issues as a then that led to the war in the first place? Journalists. You should not go to a show of war. Yeah. war. Look, I understand. I understand. I want to throw words to Look, now, I was the point is that... They deported 243 Ghanaian from Kuwait. But just of them are Igbos, but they have a Ghana passport. They deported them from Kuwait to Accra. I don't know how Adakufo, president of Ghana, heard about it. Immediately he called Kuwait president. What happened to my people? Why do you deport them? What did they do? What crime? Before you know it, they moved the same guys again down to Kuwait. Are you following me right now? And that's happened in the Nigeria? No, 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 no. I was in South Africa. You know, I've heard about Estonia, Estonia, Nigeria were massacred in that place. Now, some Nigerians, Nigerian government came there. We have one more woman called Abike. What's the Thank you. We were expecting the woman, maybe challenging them or telling them what they do. Yes, I mean now. He began to say that some Nigerians are committing cyber crime. Cyber crime. Cyber crime. What I heard was um, uh, drug oh, dealing. Thank you now. Are you telling somebody who was a very big business? Business. Yes, I mean now. Register business. I'm not talking about corner business. Register business. Who pay tax of a nation? You say it's committing cyber crime. I guess I mean now. And these people is just a local sentimental attitude. Why? Because South African law, you know, they call the citizen Zulu. Now, in South Africa, indigenous, there, if you married a wife, a, a girl now, then you now go, you are doing well in business. The lady will not bring his own sister down to you. 
he will not marry the sister again. From that day, your interest you pay in a, in a bank of South Africa as a taking loan there, your interest is very low. According to South Africa law, yeah. Now, Nigeria here right now, ready to marry 10 of them, in as much they will have that freedom of financial aspect in that place because of their business. Why their men in that place don't ready to work? I said now. Now they not got angry that our men are marrying are marrying their women, their wife. That is that thought of attacking us. I just remember. Now. You remember that time? Good. Now this is my argument. Nigeria government, what do you do about it? I just remember now. They were just talking. We'll come here. Maybe we'll be here that time. We're talking. I'll go back to Africa again. A commissioner, a minister, they said that in Nigeria, go! And Nigeria cannot reply him. That one apart. Yeah, remember, yeah, remember that time. Uh, Thank you, brother. How did that happen in Ghana? My shop is among the shop. 178,000 shops were logged in a flower region, water region. There were some that were burnt. Not a region, not a region, Kumasi region, and Accra. My shop is among shops, among the shops. After shop, they locked five that time. Now, when I come to tell Nigeria government here, you know what they do? Some of them went to meet Adrakufu. Adrakufu said that we are going to have a different law. For example, now, this shop, now you pay tax of this shop. If you have another shop, you pay tax of another shop. But we're not told that. You tell us, you Ghana, you tell you told us that. If it's a one name, this is Saba Cafe here now, one name, and you have three shop, you can pay. Now, so people now want to go and tell them that all the 10 shops somebody will owe, owned by, no, it's owned by 10. Is that person, particular person, is collecting money for the other 10 shops? They now got and lock up 175,000, 178,000 shops. What I want to bring out to now, we call the Nigerian government, they were playing us. We came to cover your shape, governor of a kitchen. We got a property there. After some time, they were playing us. We came to call an audit done on those shops. Is there? Was a financial audit done on those shops, on to, those shops to, yeah. to know their earnings and. Thank you. The last one I'm going to pay one million dollar. One million dollar as a penalty for each shop. We are not begging for 100,000. They say we are going to pay 1 million. We bring our hands a chairman to talk to them. They were playing us. Are you following me right now? Among these shops, they are not found out that about 20 shops owned by Zimbabwe. You know Zimbabwe. Their president come in immediately. Call Adakufo. They release their shop. But Nigeria shop, they didn't release it. Are you following me that brother now? Now tell me. As a lame man like me, work nobody's giving me. I need to go and work before I will get money. Now, I don't have a nation that will speak for me if anything happens to me. Do you want me to be in that nation? Or should I, should we go? That is the part of the sentiments people share. At that period now, we need to bring in the Kanu, who is fighting for the session, into this matter. Are you sitting now? Where is Nigeria government? Where we come from? So, in Namdekano, have to go to come to Ghana to meet the president. At that time, are you following that? The SND of Ghana, of Afro, have to invite in Namdekano. No, where is Nigeria government? 2018. Yeah, you remember I was coming here that time. I just remember now. If I will tell you why the thing is paying me, all the shows I have between 17 18, I don't even make money to pay landlord. One of my shops is a million naira. A warehouse. I'm not the owner. Okay, the owner of the house. You don't want to own the place. If I don't make my hand, will I pay? But some of the money I'm used to pay come from Ghana. How do you not say I'm not have a problem? In Nigeria, where I'm paying tax in Nigeria here, I cannot call them. Tax. I pay tax in Nigeria. But did you pay tax in Ghana as well? I pay tax in Ghana too. What kind of tax do you pay in you Nigeria? Pay income tax of Ghana. No, in uh, Nigeria, which in Nigeria tax? income tax too. Income tax, you are not working in Nigeria. No, I don't shop in Nigeria. Okay, but the point I register is business in Nigeria. Okay, your business is a profit tax you are meant to pay in Nigeria, not an income tax. In Nigeria here, I am now. What's happening now? Yes. If you ask all this guy that owns shop here right now, they will, they will tell you, sir, there's a Lagos state tax here. There's a local government tax here. 
Are you following yeah, me? Yeah. Thank you, brother. Now, when you come to Kaja, you come to Kaja. Yeah. Now, we pay. A levy as well. Levy will pay too. Good. Then we have to want to register business again under CSC. Are you following me now? There's some more money we pay. Are you following me right now? For example, now, let me use Lagos State. Yeah. In Lagos State, I don't pay for million. Yeah. In Lagos State here, yeah. I'm not talking about those states. I'm talking about KT State. I'm not talking about your states. I'm Chris M. Electronics. I'm going show you my ID card here. Yes, I answer me now. But what I'm telling you is that if I have a problem, there's no one. Nobody from these people that's collecting money from me that, that, will, that will come for me. Are you following me right now? At that time, we went to Tanzania. I want to shop in Tanzania. Tanzania come and tell us that we are my greatest citizen of Tanzania. We should go to where we are in their main indigenous. That's Nigeria. Let them talk about the, what is going on there. Let them help, help us. I even now, Nigeria don't care. Now tell me, as a Nigerian man, will you come, will you go ahead? Say that we should stand with this kind of one Nigeria. Where we have problem, government is not coming for it. Are you following me right now? Now, if you are, you still know the canoe, whom I don't, I don't regard. You know, let me tell you, a lot of people, men, when you see women at a party in a particular place, when I talk about association, they will not listen to you. You know that. Now, because of this property, we don't, some of us don't listen to Nam Dekano. But the same person that we call the home meeting with the Ghana president, that call some of the political, political leaders, after talking to them, they change their mind. From $1 million to $200, I mean $200,000, I should pay for penalty. I mean, now tell me, where should I, where should I support? Should I support the country here? I guess I mean now. Should I support the other side? Those are the pains. Those are the pains. Okay, my dear brother. Thank you. If you have any problem in any way in the whole world, the government will not listen to you. I mean the government of Nigeria. Nigeria will not listen to you. The government will not listen to you.